Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have several questions for you right out of the gate. Have you ever had an experience with a brand? I mean, an experience. I mean, something that caused you to feel something or think something uh, with of a package. Now, this could be a good experience or a bad experience. Now, I have a specific question for you about this. The question is, did the packaging or the branding have something to do with that experience that you had? Whether it was positive or negative, we've all had both experiences with particular products and specifically with brands and branded products. Could you feel and, ta ta and notice the difference between cheap and high quality in the packaging, in the product, and how did that cause you to think about that brand and whether or not you were going back to that in the future? What made you think of the things that you thought of, whether it was positive or negative? Now, we are going to dive deep into why this stuff matters for our Amazon products and for our Amazon listings and how it doesn't have to break the bank to just give your listings and give your products just a little bit of a one-up. How can you step up your game to sell more products on Amazon? And we brought in a very amazing guest expert to talk about this stuff. We're gonna tap into the power of branding and a little bit of storytelling and a little bit of copywriting so we can grow and strengthen our business and our Amazon listings. We have a guest here today, Emma Shermer Tamir, and she is so fantastic at marketing and branding and stories. But I want to tell you first, before she comes on, a little bit about why this matters to us in our audience and our listings. I know some of you, I can hear you, I can hear the thoughts, I can hear the skepticism and it says, well, I just have an Amazon brand and I'm just putting you know, bundles out there and trying to sell products and branding doesn't have to be that important. Yeah, yes and no. Yes, you might not want to enter your products into Walmart or to Target or put them on actual store shelves like brick and mortar, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to invest a little bit of extra time and energy into the pre presentation of your products. It creates an experience for the customer, even if it's really small, they know they can feel the difference between something that's thrown together and something that's a little bit more high quality and it doesn't have to cost a lot. So Emma has transformed many, many, over a thousand businesses around the world to boost their sales and their online presence with brand stories. Now, you don't have to have some sort of origin story where it's like, Emma's gonna get into this and it's gonna be great, but just keep this in mind while you're progressing. You don't have to have some earth shattering story that's like, oh, I went from rags to riches or things like that. It can just simply be that you designed something to create convenience and a variety for the customers who want high quality products in a convenient and, and easy way. It does not have to be some sort of personalized, deep, you know, trauma or something that you had to put into your brand story. So before you enter into this podcast with some, some doubts and some skepticism, or maybe you're going to press skip this episode because you think this doesn't apply to you, I challenge you to just dig in and listen. You will You'll learn some tips. You will learn some things that will improve your sales in Amazon. A little bit goes a really long way when it comes to branding. And so Emma is going to help us. She's helped thousands of businesses do this already. Brands from Shopify, brands from eBay, brands from Amazon. And her thoughtful approach and strategies have helped so many people. Um, their goal, her goal is to empower everyone to create better product pages, better Amazon listings, write a little bit better copy to make brands stand out more on Amazon. She wants, you, her goal is to help you have more people add to cart. That is the goal on Amazon. So without further ado, let's welcome Emma to the show. Hey, Emma, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you could be part of the Amazon Files podcast today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and dive into the world of branding and you know what, what people can do to really make uh, customers excited to buy their products. 
Absolutely. And I know that we, when we were talking off air, of course, we always have to tell people these things. Uh, we were talking off air. We shared this like amazing experience that we had with the same pair of sunglasses on Amazon. And so I wanted to talk first about that because, you know, we're talking about these experiences with brands and so many people, you know, kind of come at it. Like it's not that big of a deal. It's like the last thing they think about. They're always about the product, always about the product, but the branding and the experience you can have with a product as simple as sunglasses like we did um can make all of the difference so we were talking just to preface the story here everybody we were talking off air about different brand experiences and i was telling emma about this pair of sunglasses that i bought from amazon and she's like no way i have the same pair and i have the same brand from the same company and we were like raving about these like and they're not expensive y'all these are not like ray-ban hundreds of dollars this is like maybe a 20 or 30 dollar pair not super break the bank you know but they're not dollar store and the experience we had with this black packaging and then like the extra cloth remember that they they put that cloth in there and we're like this is the the type of experience we want to trigger for our customers and branding so what was your experience with just even those packages that you had opened yeah, I feel like there are so many elements of it because one of the things is that, you know, sunglasses aren't just to look good. They're also to protect our eyes from the sun. And uh, this brand in particular makes a lot of polarized lenses, which doctors say is the best type of lens to wear uh, to actually protect your eyes from the UV rays, but also from the, what well, we don't need to get into the science of it. Anyway. <laughs> So this is something that, you know, someone could say, oh, yes, our lenses are polarized, but they may not actually be polarized. That's an experience that I think most customers have had on Amazon where they think they're buying one thing and they end up getting something completely different. And so because of that, I go in as a customer kind of like primed to be disappointed (laughs) and... (laughs) Now, like why this- do you think that is though? Why do you think that we're we're automatically assuming sometimes that we've we're gonna get junk or we're gonna be disappointed? Because unfortunately, I think that's kind of the history of the Amazon marketplace. And that especially in the early days, but even still to this day, there are a lot of companies that might kind of you know, they manipulate reviews or they do other things to make it seem like a lot of people love their products. And actually they're just taking a lot of effort to sell you something that's a piece of garbage. And so, you know, there are a lot of reasons for why that might be, but because of that, most people that are going onto the Amazon website, especially anybody that's a prime member that shops on Amazon a good amount, I think they understand that they may not actually be getting what they are hoping to get. And because of that, that's actually why the branding piece is even more important. Because if you're working against, uh, you know, a customer's perception, if they're not coming in with giving you the benefit of the doubt, then they're going to be looking for every potential thing that might suggest otherwise. So this product arrives and it's in a nice sturdy box and it has the wipes and, you know, even the, um, like the opening and closing of the, what do you call that piece of, of sunglasses? (laughs) The things you put around your ears. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the parts of days of it, but yeah, the, I, I remember it being so sturdy and even opening the box that had that magnetic closure that just felt like, oh, I can totally reuse this. And then the sunglasses were like in a sleeve and then they came with extras. Now, y'all, we're not saying that you have to put extras in your products, but come on, a couple of cents of like the wipes that they sent in, even just a few of that scratch resistant, um, can you know, a, a case that it comes in even. So, um, um, these are little things that you can do to add to branding and like let's just be real like why does branding matter on amazon if you think and when i say branding i'm talking about quality of the package the way the logos look the colors and how they match the font even on the packaging like why do we feel like this matters on amazon when let's be honest most of the people aren't seeing our branding or packaging on amazon they're only seeing an item and then they don't see the packaging until it arrives so Let's dive into why that matters. So first of all, just because somebody buys your product doesn't mean that they're actually going to keep it. It's so easy for customers to be able to return a product. And so if you're kind of doing things and and trying out tactics to get people to buy your product that are not a good fit, then they're 
going to send it back. And then they're going to be more likely to have, uh, you know, to leave a negative review and whatnot. So you're opening yourself up to more costs from returns, uh, more effort and, and managing all of the customer service around that. And then also having to deal with the potential, you know, ramifications of negative reviews. So that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect that's more exciting to me is, we're both having a conversation off air talking about how much we love this brand. And instead of saying, oh yeah, it's just this product I got off of Amazon. We both remember the name of the brand. So what does that mean? Now you and I both are essentially doing free marketing for this company, you know, cause we, we had a really positive experience. We love it. And I've already told other people about these sunglasses. And so those weren't, uh, sales that they had to spend a bunch in, on PPC to acquire. Uh, people are already now primed to have a positive experience. So it, there's just so many uh, benefits that can come along with taking the time to be thoughtful and to give this attention to detail. And the other thing is a lot of people, when they're shopping on Amazon, they're not just going to buy one product. You know, if you need a, a mug, you might buy three mugs and then look at all of them when they arrive and choose the best one. And so if one of them comes and it's in a really nice package and it has some of those thoughtful extras in it and it makes you feel like or this is a brand. It's just not broken because oh, someone yeah. <laughs> spend the money to make good packaging so that your mug isn't broken. I mean, that's number one. Like, okay, well, this one could have been in the nicest branding possible, but if it's not broken, they didn't spend the extra detail. Didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm just thinking no, like, no, so yeah. many things I've gotten that have been broken because the packaging was lacking. Yes. Yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's one of those things. And I think when people hear the word branding. It can be one of those things that can make you feel a little bit lost and a little bit overwhelmed and also a little bit confused and having somewhat of a narrow experience understanding of what branding even means. And you've already mentioned, you know, it's all it's all of these things. Your brand is in some ways like the identity of your business that's out in the world. So when someone engages with a customer service representative and if they have a positive or negative experience, that's contributing to how people perceive your brand. And it's all of those little touch points from the packaging to the marketing to the interactions that are all forming a picture. And it's happening whether you're intentional about it or not. And if you're not intentional about it, then most likely you're going to have missed opportunities and create problems for yourself. Yourself. But if you take the time to really be thoughtful about it, then you're able to build something that's more than just a, you know, quick one off transaction and turn it into something that uh, can really bring immense value to all aspects of your business. And I love like I want to go back to what you said about the word of marketing, word, word of mouth kind of marketing, the free advertising, the free marketing that we experienced together and reminding you guys that we were total strangers before this moment. We connected, you know, with different networks and podcast guests and things like that. But we shared this experience because of the sunglasses. And because of that, it's again, how many times have we been asked or has somebody asked us, oh, where did you get that? And we were like, oh, here it is. And with Amazon, you're talking about customers, you can send a link. So if I was talking about the sunglasses and you didn't know what they were, I could have been like, here, let me just text you the link. These are the sunglasses. And then you could have discovered that for yourself. So um, I don't want people to take that lightly that people shareable links on Amazon are so easy. How many times have I shared stuff with people? Oh, I bought this on Amazon. Here's the link. You can just go into that. You can click share, you can click copy. So what people are doing that with your brand as well. And so you have to think about what would what would be something someone would talk about with your product even if it's just sunglasses or just something that seemingly doesn't matter a whole lot if you're loving it and you're representing it well and it's a good product someone else is going to ask you about that and the same thing happens for your own brands as well regardless of the product that's why we're not talking about specific products it doesn't really matter whether it's low end or high end the perceived value based on the investment into the brand it makes all the difference now i love what you say you were defining a little bit about what branding is and it's really that overall um, to just repeat what you said, your forward facing identity. So this is like your company is stepping out into the world and there's tons of behind the scenes stuff, but this is what everyone sees from the outside and believe it or not, whether you think it's just an Amazon brand or not, 
people are going to be talking about it and sharing it, whether it's positive or negative, they're going to be talking about your products and they will send people, Oh, I got this. You know, I had, I know someone that does, um, you know, like home decor, but when someone sees that sign in their house, they, Oh, I got this on Amazon. Um, you know, then people can, are going to start looking for it. So your branding is super important. Um, now what do you think is the, is there a most important thing about your branding? I know you talk a lot about stories and copywriting specifically with Amazon. Do you start there and move towards packaging or is it kind of like an all encompassing thing? I would say it's an all encompassing thing, but that also understanding that just like we develop as people, your brand is going to develop over time. And so, you know, if you can take the time, because a lot of people, exactly what you were saying at the beginning of this conversation, they invest all of this time into product development. And then it's like, okay, it's go time. Now we have to launch and all this other stuff doesn't really matter. And that's actually all the stuff that matters the most, because if you're not taking the time to uh, help people find your product, to connect with your brand, to want to buy it, and then to have a positive experience with it, then all of that other effort is kind of for nothing. Uh, And so I, I know that's not the most satisfying answer to say you sort of want to do it all, but you don't have to do it all perfectly at the beginning. But even, you know, maybe taking that extra bit of time to make your packaging something more than a poly bag or to put a little note in inside or to, you know, think about some of those value points that you can connect with customers around. I think one of the challenges is that some of this stuff can feel a little bit intimidating because there's not one right answer. So it's a little bit easier and more binary to make decisions with product development and even PPC strategy and things like that. Like you can kind of follow the numbers to make your decisions. And when it comes to the creative aspects, so to things like your logo and your the colors you use and the type of packaging and how you tell your story and the way that you use words to communicate about your business, that is something that is can be done in many different ways. Like if you say, my brand is lighthearted and has a sense of humor, um, that that could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. I mean, think of how many different types of sense of humor somebody can have. That's really true. Um, <laughs> yeah, it goes from anywhere to like, eh, don't judge me to really like dad jokes, right? Right, <laughs> so- right. There's so many different things. Now, let's talk about that for a minute with using words and story branding and things like that, because I know that's your level of expertise there. We definitely want to dive deep into that. But one of the things I can, I'm just going to bring like devil's advocate here for a second. A lot of my, my, my listeners, my audience, they're thinking, oh, I just, I just sell these things or I'm just selling, um, I don't know, one, one of the clients I have has some subscription boxes. I mean, subscription box types. So they're like a gift box. It's evergreen. So it's not always changing or another client just has some like party supplies they're saying they're like how do i have a story brand i don't have an origin story or i don't have any you know it's not some rags to riches story how how do i tell a story about my brand if i don't have any stories like what is that really how do you do that right so most of the time when we think stories and when we get stuck in this dilemma of oh i don't have that you know there was this amazing like terrible problem and then i found this amazing solution and now the world is better for my creation that's not the only kind of story that exists. We can also tell a story about the future that we're hoping to achieve, the types of things that we are doing actively in the present. And so story can be uh, around an idea, a value, a concept, and it doesn't even have to directly relate to your product. So maybe you're a party goods company, but what you care about is actually um, you know, helping people have special experiences with their loved ones. And so the party materials become a way of doing that, but they're not really the the central message of what it is that you're doing. And so those are the types of things that then you can use to really connect with people deeper. And the other thing is that, you know, when you're selling on, Amazon, and especially when you're selling a product that is not a a unique invention, you're most likely selling against a lot of other pro- uh, a lot of other um, companies that are selling 
the same thing. And so this is actually your point of differentiation. This is the thing that you have that's going to help customers choose your product over all of the other ones. So there's a great example that I like to talk about. Um, there's a, a company called uh, Bulletproof Coffee. Are you familiar with them? Yes, yes. And they're selling coffee, right? So like there are only so many things that you can do to make coffee special. They, where you get the beans from, how you roast the beans, that that's pretty much it. It's a commodity good. Yes. So you're not really competing on coffee if you're selling coffee. And that's a cutthroat category to sell in, but think of the rewards as well. Because if you went over a customer, they're buying a new bag every couple of weeks if they drink coffee regularly, maybe even more than that if they have multiple coffee drinkers in the family. So there's a lot of value to be gained in winning over a customer. And Bulletproof, or not Bulletproof, why did I say Bulletproof? Um, Black Rifle. <laughs> Black Rifle Coffee Company is a, a veteran-owned coffee company. And so if you look at their messaging, if you look at their product pages on Amazon, they talk about the coffee, but they actually talk a lot more about the values of, uh, you know, being a veteran owned business and supporting law enforcement and the military and all of these things, which can be a little bit divisive. Not everybody is going to get behind some of these values and ideas, but the ones that are excited by that are going to be really excited to be able to buy a coffee that aligns with those values. And so those people, yes, they're buying coffee, but they're actually kind of aligning themselves with something more than that. And so not only are they able to compete against, you know, all of the big brands that have that brand recognition that people know and trust and have used for years, but they're able to generate great repeat business and really strong brand loyalty because they are connecting around story. And it's not really the origin story as much as the story of who they are, what they stand for, and the future that they are wanting to kind of all create together with the brand and the customers. That is such an amazing example of that. Because what I love most about that is it they're unapologetically not for everyone. And yes. I love that because when you're in a brand, you can decide um, whether or not, you know, you don't have to be for everyone. You have to stand out in some way. And the coffee example is so amazing because, I mean, most of us, let's just be real, most of us drink coffee. And multiple times a day, I'm like, here I am right here, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, um, definitely all day long. And so that is something that's repeat business. And it is an ideology. The more connected, that we as humans feel to the products and services that we're aligning with. It's just more than packaging in a box. It's, it's a connection to a brand and a company. And also as customers, we're customers ourselves. We're not just selling products. We buy products constantly. We buy online, offline, everywhere, all the time. We're surrounded. We're a consumeristic society, right? We're always buying things. And one of the things that, that you can tell that we all can tell right away is how much time, effort, and energy someone put into this brand, this packaging. Just by feeling a piece of uh, uh, clothing, even, we can be like, oh, this is, you know, immediately we kind of decide, oh, this is a little cheaper, or this is way really nice, more expensive. I mean, let's just talk about like Target le leggings versus Lululemon. I'm like, we just know that there is a higher quality, higher standard. It not only comes with the branding, but they're unapologetically the most expensive, and they don't apologize for that like you can have cheap if you want cheap there's plenty of cheap we're expensive and we're the best and then somehow people flock to them because they say that they're like oh we definitely don't want to align with cheap we want to align with expensive high quality you know branding type things so our customers on amazon are feeling the same thing but they're also feeling much more skeptical than we would walking into a store because they can't touch feel, see, or smell anything that you have. They only have your images and your brand story. So think about if you spend enough time, spend some time even with your A plus content and writing some of these brand stories and including some images that, that you want to align with your brand. When your brand is spoken, what do you want people to say and think? Now, I know you guys that this is a challenge. Most of you are just still trying to figure out which kind of products that you're putting together and selling, but this is part of the story because when you add these 
these things, even if you're selling unsexy HDMI cords, we're <laughs> selling a brand in an ideology. We're not selling, like, like Emma was saying, we're not selling coffee. Everybody's got coffee. So what you're selling, um, a confidence to someone to say, hey, we've spent time and energy on our listings. We spent time and energy on our packaging. We spent time and energy on our images and this listing. And you're at least going to walk away saying, wow, that was a really nice listing. That was a really nice picture. Even if they don't buy, they'll remember that you spent the time creating all this stuff, even if it was for something as unsexy as an HDMI cord, um, because you, you're aligning with value already. These people value my time and theirs enough to present a brand rather than just, I've got a cord in a poly bag and it's just another thing on Amazon. Right. It's sort of like the equivalent of, you know, your, your product page is like your salesperson. And so you can have a salesperson who shows up and they're in a great suit and they got a good night's sleep and they're freshly showered and they look fantastic. And then you can have another person that they were out late last night. They roll out of bed. They still smell like the bar. They're in a rumpled shirt because they didn't have time to iron it. And that's kind of the equivalent of what we're doing here, where it's like, if this is your opportunity, your one opportunity to be able to communicate with your customers, who do you want representing your business? Do you want Mr. Stayed Out All Night Partying or do you want the professional that takes their job seriously and wants to, you know, is is looking at with such attention to detail to make sure that the customer feels seen and understood and valued? Um, that is what's happening online, even if you don't realize it, that that's what's happening. You know, we as customers, we go onto Amazon and we have a certain set of criteria that we need to answer. So even if it's an HDMI cord, not everybody needs the same HDMI cord. I have um, an Apple laptop that only has the USB, uh, C, like the two, like the tiny little USB things. So a standard HDMI cable I need to have an adapter with. So it maybe there's one that doesn't have, you don't need an adapter. It just has that exit on the other side. And that's not necessarily branding, but you need to make that available for me. And then if that's really the choice that you're making to sell a product like that, then, okay, this is for a customer that is an Apple customer. So what does an Apple customer look for in products and what kind of experiences do they expect when they get an Apple computer? And if they take, you know, if they're willing to spend more money on a device and they, part of that is they appreciate all of the attention to detail and the simplicity and the beautiful packaging and all of that then maybe how can you kind of borrow some of that in the experience that you provide to your customers in the colors you have and in the um, types of imagery that you have and in the way that you communicate and, 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 and all of those things. You know, I'm going to say something that's like, I mean, just brace yourself y'all um, because you know, I'm tough and you know, I say the tough love things, but honest to goodness, like, if you just a lot of the stuff and a lot of the work is done up front, right? We don't, we, we people want to be convinced. They want to be convinced and not with salesy words, but high quality. We also know that none of us are trying to align with the cheapest products, right? Like we just were like, yeah, mine's the cheapest. Well, people are skeptical of cheapest. A lot of times if you present, I've seen case studies like this, and this is where I'm going to be tough on you guys to be like, do the work. Okay, do the work. This is the work you're doing for your customers. If I can promise you, which you guys know I can't promise you, um, but if I could promise you that you give me two weeks of studying branding and picking colors and picking uh, the perfect box that fits your items, and I don't care what the items are. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're selling $500 something or $5 something. If you can pick branding and a story or something that you want to communicate to your customers, and then they, and I can promise you that that extra investment and energy and time into your listings, your products, and your packaging will bring you X amount of sales. Say, um, this product can be a million dollar product if you just spend a month working on packaging and messaging and, and marketing. Um, would you say yes? Would you say yes to that? Would you put in a month's work to have an evergreen product that continually sells itself no matter what product it is? I think all of us would be like, yes, give me that. 
That's what we're giving you guys today, right? We're telling you it matters. We're telling you that, yes, you can buy a cheap poly bag and get away with it. But we're not trying. Is that how you want to run your business? That's what I'm asking you guys. Do you want to just have the cheapest, the most inexpensive thing you can throw in a bag and hope it sells on Amazon and that you have one customer per and you don't have to care about repeat business? I don't want that. I want repeat customers. I want great reviews. I want minimal returns. I want the profit for my investment. And so I'm willing to invest up front. My question is, are you guys going to take branding seriously? And Emma is going to give us one tip at least of how. What do you feel like if you had to pick the most important thing for Amazon branding, story, copywriting, and all that, what is the most important thing to focus on? I think first of all, you just have to have a clarity of who you are as a brand. And if you don't have that figured out, then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to make a decision because you like it. And then this because it's the cheapest and then that because someone else said it. And so then you create this hodgepodge of things that don't all go together and don't create a cohesive experience. And that cohesive experience is really, really important because if you are going to be uh, you know, uh, selling yourself as a high ticket, high value product, but then you're not actually walking the walk and delivering on that. Then again, that's going to create this mismatch of experience, which is, is going to cause problems for you. And so you have to have that clarity. And one exercise that I really love, that's a great way to kind of dig into this. And it, it should be a little bit fun as well is, it's, it's a, you know, you might've heard of customer avatars where you are really creating a full profile of who your target customers are. So you actually do that for your, your brand. So you personify your brand and you say, okay, if my brand was a person, what would be its favorite TV show? What would be the influencers that it follows on social media? What kind of clothing would it wear? What's its favorite restaurant to eat at? And it sounds silly. No but way. Actually, it's amazing. Actually, <laughs> when you build all this out, then you're not relying on lighthearted and funny. You're able to say, um, my my brand wears flannels. It loves to eat at the hole in wall, hole in the wall Ethiopian restaurant downtown. Uh, they are not on social media because you know. And so then you're like, oh, I know exactly the kind of sense of humor and and lightheartedness that this person is is going to be presenting. And so not only does it give you more clarity, but then whoever you're working with, whether it's somebody doing your customer service or designing your logo or helping you create your packaging or writing your product page, you're helping align everyone so that they have a clear picture, you have a clear picture, and then all of those decisions come much easier. And honestly, that, I just, first of all, I love that. And I love, uh, you know, I talk a lot about this in my uh, wholesale bundle system and some of the framework. One of the beginning steps is really taking your knowledge bank and going through that and then creating the avatar for every bundle. I ask my, when my clients are creating these bundles that that's part of the process is like, who is your customer avatar? What problem are you solving or me are you needing? Because a lot of people are bringing, uh, at least with the Amazon files and mommy income, we're bringing bundles to the table. A lot of them are gift bundles. So I'm asking them and all these questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how, who's buying this? Where are they going to use it? How are they going to use it? How are they going to interact with it? And that is the same thing for your branding. And now let, we can make this as simple and as complicated as we want when we're, we're picking our avatar. But I think understanding that number one, your customer is not everyone. It isn't. It's not everyone. Just like Emma was talking about the HDMI cords and how she has Apple products and Apple products are not everyone. And Apple's, again, unapologetic about saying, we're not for everyone, but we are for these people. Are you one of these people? And that's exactly what you need to do even with your party supply brand or another client I have has tons of pet supplies. So who is the pet owner? How do they feel about their pet? Do they want to feed their pet the cheapest, grossest food that they want? No, they love this pet and they want to take care of it as if it's their child and they love it and they want it to have health and longevity and things like that. So it's not just another pet food or just another pet toy. They actually care about their pets and want the best for them. So you don't want to be promoting yourself as the cheapest, less expensive type things. You want to be like, I care about your pet as much as you do. That's your brand story. So before everyone's freaking out about brand story, what do you want your customers to feel when they get your product? 
because that's the most important thing. Do you want them to be like, oh, this is cheap junk and I you know I wish I hadn't bought it and return now. Do you want them to throw your package? I mean, we're going to throw packaging away. Let's be real. But at the same time, you want them to just throw it away and be like, oh, this is this or it's ripped or it's dented or it's not. Like I said, it doesn't protect the mug that you're sending, you know, because it was the cheapest box you can buy. I understand that business has a lot of expenses and we have to cut corners at some point, right? But branding and packaging is not where we cut corners because that's the first thing that people see and understand and experience. And if you want them to feel immediately like this is cheap, then congratulations, you win. <laughs> like, but you, if you don't want them to feel that, then you've got to invest some time and energy into how you want them to feel and bringing something to the table that, that will help them feel that way. Well, and, and kind of building on that, the, the fact of the matter is, is that if you are clear about who you're selling to and who your customer is and what you're providing them, you can also charge more. So, uh, black rifle coffee, they, they charge double what a grocery store brand, or maybe even triple what a grocery store brand is. And it's not that their, you know, products are triple the quality It's that they are connecting with people on something unique and special that is hitting that emotion like you're talking about. And so rather than being in a constant fight to the bottom, you know, if you're, if your uh, differentiator is price, someone can always come in and undercut you. And there are people that would even be willing to take a loss until you, they run you out of business and then they can charge whatever prices they want. So price in and of itself is not a competitive advantage. And think of all of the opportunities that you would open for yourself if you take the time to invest a little bit more in this so that you can charge a little bit more. So then you have, you know, it's not, oh, this is an extra cost that I'm chipping away from my profits, but actually this is giving me the ability to really provide an exceptional experience and have a healthier business with stronger margins at the end of the day. Absolutely. And again, price is like, this is what I tell people with their Amazon listings. Price is the last thing that you adjust if you're not having sales either. Maybe it's your copy. Maybe it's your images. Maybe it's something that you're not crystal clear on, or it's just Amazon's crazy algorithm and you're not being shown on page one for your keywords. I don't know. But um, the reality is none of us desire to have cheap junky products and so that's never our intention when we're going in and your customers all um, i've seen this case study i've talked about this before where um, the majority of people when presented with something they're looking for and they see a high-end price high price overpriced almost something in the middle and then something super cheap they almost always pick that middle one because they just feel like "Ah, it's not the most expensive it's not the cheapest i'm not breaking the bank but i'm not buying you know the knockoff or something like that and you know it's just decent somewhere in the middle so you don't always have to complete on compete on price and i totally agree with you your your margin is someone else's opportunity and so they will always take advantage there are people out there that don't care they will undercut your price they have deeper pockets they will lose money um in order to um do what they need to do for their brand and you can just be smarter about it you guys can just be smarter you can think ahead of time take some time to create what you want for your brand what you want people to think when they say i don't know i i joke that my brand's Kristen's favorite things. It's not really, but like now it's becoming a thing because people are like, oh, do you actually have that brand? I'm like, I should trademark that. No. I'm like, <laughs> favorite things. Cause I, I, when I fall in love with products, I can't help it. Like I remember them. I keep t- keep buying them. Like I have a friend that makes candles and Yankee candle can go somewhere else because she has the best smelling candles and the fun names that go along with, I mean, like the one back there is called, but first coffee. And it literally <laughs> just smells like coffee so that when I'm not drinking it, I'm smelling coffee. Cause oh my God. Gosh, I love it. Um, and sure, I could go to Yankee Candle and spend a lot of money doing all that, but I also value her and her brand and the fact that she is building a life and a legacy for her and her family and her children are seeing her and I want to support that. So yes, I will pay extra for a smaller candle um, it, in, just in order to support that. And I think we all, we all do that. We all, even subconsciously we are aligning or disaligning with brands for whatever reason and for what they stand for and don't stand for and that has everything to do with it is how you feel that they treat you you know people come to amazon for so many reasons but number one and i've done the research on this the number one reason they come is for product selection 
and not price. Price has nothing to do with it with Amazon most of the time. Do they have the lowest prices? No, but they have speed and convenience. They have variety. You can literally find almost everything when you're looking there. So that's why people come. And as Amazon sellers, we need to be aware of that. And we need to set ourselves apart from every other candle company or coffee company that's out there because eventually you will align with that. You will align with something to say, hey, I want to support a small business that's selling on Amazon with their, their candle brand or the coffee brand say, hey, I support the military. I was military or I'm in the police and I want to support something that 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 I am aligned with. And I think that is really like the most important thing there. So uh, let's talk about copywriting for just a second, because we know on Amazon, or at least this is my experience. The images are first because people are shopping with their eyes first. If your picture is crappy, the people are sc scrolling right by. But then once they get the image, now it's time to click on the listing and read about the product. So what are, so I know you're, you're an expert at copywriting when it comes to these listings. What are some of your top tips for copywriting in your listing? Well, first of all, one of the most underutilized pieces of Amazon real estate is actually the product images. So aside from your main image, which, you know, they're pretty strict rules uh, there, but all of your other product images, if you are not utilizing text in those, you are missing out. Text on your images is going to help you do a few things. First of all, you know, there's that saying, uh, a picture tell has, is worth Pictures a million worth, words. Yeah, worth a thousand, thousand words, words whatever. Yeah. I'm really bad at those expressions. <laughs> There we go. A picture's worth a thousand words. But the thing is, is that you don't know which thousand words uh, your customer is grabbing from when they're looking at it. Maybe one person sees a picture and it reminds them of a beachside vacation with their family and the other person sees it and starts worrying about the state of the environment. You know, just a picture of a beach could be interpreted in so many different ways for so many different people. But suddenly, if you have a, a short little phrase on there that is you know, uh, either connecting on an emotional level or communicating a key benefit or detail of your product, then you're not leaving the interpretation of that image up to the customer. And so since people are shopping with their eyes, uh, Amazon's even done some beta testing where you, for a brief period of time, you were able to scroll through the product images from the search from the search page, which I wouldn't be surprised if they end up bringing that back eventually. And so that's showing an awareness on their part. Okay, customers are are using images as one of the main deciding factors. And so run with that and make those images do the work that you need them to do. Use that to really uh, highlight all of the key details that you're also going to be talking about in the, in the rest of the listing. So that's something that's so important. This actually happened to me the other day when I was doing research um, on Amazon. There was a product that I'm using for a demonstration and a training. And as I was looking at the products and the, there was your Christmas tree skirts and they were coming up and I'm like, okay, Christmas tree skirts. And I'm seeing the ones that are top. And one of the images in one of the top five, and I'm looking at top five to 10 on page one, right? And it just Christmas tree skirt and what's coming up, right? And what I see is a lot of them are these like white fluffy, like faux fur um, things are really huge this year right so i'm looking at that and one of the ones i clicked on wasn't the top one top page these were not sponsored ads but one of that grabbed my attention was the image that said it was like us versus them and it was like a comparison of their competitor and it showed like a zoomed in picture of like high quality the faux fur that they had versus like this like cheap like see through you could kind of almost see the person's hand through it and her thought yeah this one's 29.99 but this is what you get with it and it's like ours is 49.99 but so much better it will last a lifetime you know kind of thing so there's no assumptions they're like us versus them we're so confident that ours is better and we're going to show you and i felt like that was another something like it, the text was just like ours versus theirs and then there's two like, images side by side and i thought that grabbed my attention so there's something to that you guys is just really being confident and again going back to knowing who knowing who like black rifle they know who their customer is who they want their customer to be now they have outliers there have some people that buy their coffee that don't always align with everything they have um 
but we have to define that and say, I don't want everyone. I only want the people who are going to come and buy this because they want high quality and they want good products and they want a brand that will stand behind their products. They want uh, a trusted communication. They want to see all the things. So whatever it is that you truly want from your customers, you don't just want their money. I mean, honestly, we wouldn't be in this business if it was just after money. There's plenty of easier ways to make money, let's be honest. Um, so this is tough work, people, but it's it's your life work. What do you... what? do you want to just do it half ass? I mean, I don't know. That's just like just getting down to the bottom of it. It's like so many of the, of us are wanting to cut corners here and there, but branding and packaging is just not, not how we're going to do that. Um, so, okay. You said use, use text in images. And what about the body copy? I want your thoughts on, um, like long form versus short form when it comes to Amazon. And I know there's different levels of this, but in your experience, what has been the best way to sell products, long form, short form, or something in between? Yeah. So I would say mostly short form for Amazon is what really works. Uh, partially because it's so difficult to be comparing products side by side with each other. And so if you're getting too wordy and getting too kind of like lost in things, then people are going to get lost and they're going to click over to somebody else. But you also want to understand kind of how each part of your listing functions and what its job is. So for example, your title, that's strong SEO value. That's sort of like the sign on your door as well. That's telling people when they've searched something and they're looking at the search results, results page. Yep. You're in the right spot. Go ahead and click on in. So they get inside and then the bullets are really where people are going through that mental checklist. Like these are the things that I know that I need in, in a product and you don't want to just be feature-based, but I like to really wed each important feature to a benefit and have each bullet be about one thing. Um, and keeping it pretty short and compact, no, no more than 200 characters, which will really force you to have to be very selective and thoughtful about the words that you're using. But before we even get to the specifics of that, it's going back to wh what you have been talking a lot about, which is needing to understand what the emotional impact of purchasing this product is for the customer. And the clearer that you can be about that, the better job that you can do the work of answering why somebody should buy this product. Because of course, there are a million Christmas tree skirts out there. So why does it matter that this one is the thickest and is going to have that higher higher quality. It's not just having higher quality for the sake of higher quality. It's because, you know, decorating for Christmas time is, a you know, a, a special tradition that, it, you know, is passed from generation to generation. And it's all about the, the season and the time with family and a lot of really emotional things that, Yes, it's just a Christmas tree skirt, but it actually represents so much more than that. And the experience that you're creating for your household over the holidays and, you know, the way that your pictures are going to turn out when you're posting on Instagram, when it's time to un unwrap presents and, you know, show the family in their matching pajamas around the tree <laughs> and it's, it's all of those. And then thinking about that and saying, oh yeah, people love posting those things in my A plus content, in my product images, I should have and a picture of that. Reviews. And yes. in your reviews now, people are adding images of your product in their reviews that every the world can see. So do you want them being like holding it up and it's broken and it's cheap and like, we don't want that. So yeah, I love, I love that you brought that to life. There is an emotional element to every purchase at some point, even if it's, I just want this high quality thing for myself so that I don't have to think about it anymore. So I don't have to worry about it anymore so that I don't have to, you know, blah, blah, blah. We are all using products to solve problems or meet needs. And there's always an emotional response to that. Even if it's just, oh, I'm so mad that, you know, my thing broke and now I have to go on Amazon and buy something else. And I don't want that thing to break. So now we're heading into it. It emotionally and we're looking for that response to be like okay 
this is going to be the best product for me. This is going to be something. So reaching those emotional triggers and talking about what this product is going to do for the person at the end of the day. Because honestly, they're not just buying tree skirts. Like you said, they're buying Insta photos, right? Like we're buying our future here. <laughs> so I just find that so funny because it's so our society right now today. It's like, yes. oh, this is going to look so great in my, you know, picture for the lifetime. But those last a lifetime and memories. We're, we're big holiday people here. So we just love all the different fun things. And um, the pictures are everything because that's what's going to like when I'm old and I'm in my rocking chair, that's what I'm all going to be looking at all these things and all this stuff. So um, it really, it really does matter to keep it. I'm a short and sweet person when it comes to Amazon. I want to show them the features and I want to let them know um, all those different trigger words, emotionally trigger words are those things that you use in your listings often as well. Yes. And it's something that I think one of the th challenges that people have when they're trying to do this is they'll say, but that's obvious, right? Like everybody knows that that's, you know, why they should care about this thing. And what you have to remember is, is that nobody is going into their Amazon product buying journey in a perfectly controlled environment that's has, you know, it's silent and there's one screen open and there are no, no notifications coming in. No, what's the experience of shopping on Amazon? You're on the phone, like when you're at a traffic, traffic light and you're waiting, you're, you know, standing in line at Target because there were some things you needed, but then they didn't have something else you needed it. So you're shopping, you're, you know, in the middle of your lunch break and your, and, and your computer mouse isn't working as well. So you quickly go online to get something like th these are things that people are doing in the middle of their lives. And they have a lot of external things going on and competing for their attention. So even if it is obvious, if you really communicate this, this will do this thing for you. This will help you feel like you won and you took the best Instagram photos mm -hmm. of all of your friends and family that is going to connect with something that they're already feeling. And then they'll get that reassurance like, yes, this is, this is what I'm after. This is what I want. And this is what I'm going to buy. And it helps make that decision easier because it can actually be really stressful to be shopping on Amazon. You have a, a, a lot of options out there and you can't compare products very easily to each other. And so if you can do a better job at connecting with why somebody wants this thing, then you make it so much easier for them to choose you over, over somebody else. It's so, so true. And the going back and finally kind of wrapping up and bringing back it around to that customer avatar, you guys spend a 15 minute hustle thinking about this stuff, planning this stuff, thinking about, okay, who is that? So we could even do like, we're going to do it like for fun right now for, for the Christmas tree skirt. Cause I think we've got this avatar pretty nailed. We actually might be one of those people. I don't know if you are, but it's like, Hmm, this is something interesting. <laughs> I wasn't looking for a faux fur, you know, a Christmas tree skirt that happened to be one of the, there, there's like four of them on, on page one, when you're looking at these, but that's what I mean. If we understand this avatar, right. Who's going to buy this. It's that, it's that woman, the mom probably, or a woman who is, who is going to be decorating her home for the holidays. And she she's hosting the party and she's very up on the trends and she wants to do something that's new and exciting and different and wants her family to be wowed and she just loves to do it and it's her her joy to be able to do that so she's looking for a new christmas tree skirt because maybe last year uh, it got ruined or last year is so last year and we have to be this year right so let's do something different what's new what's trending what's better what's what's you know out with the old and with the new and she's replacing her couch pillows as well so that might be an upsell and she's going to stage all this and she has the most amazing pictures on Instagram and she's keeping that up this year and she's looking for the most trendy, coolest, different style tree skirt that no one else is going to be having around Christmas for her party. So that's who who's going to be buying this, right? And does she want it to look cheap and, and raggly and kind of like, oh, well, this is something, you know, cheap China, you know, stuff. Or does she want it to be really nice and she spends lots of time on that. So this is the kind of avatar stuff we have to think about. That is the person you're selling to and if you want to appeal to her you have to speak her language you have to talk with her hey make your instagram photos the number one liked this year by using this i don't know i mean this is marketing people um but this is the kind of stuff that we have to come up with in order to write listings that speak to our specific avatar
100%. And what's so interesting when you kind of go into that is then you think about something like high quality, which if you spend too much time talking about this is going to last for forever, this avatar doesn't care about that. This avatar is going to be buying another Christmas tree skirt next year because this is something that, you know, it's all about really curating the aesthetic for each year and having a unique look. And so the high quality actually means something different to her than it would to somebody that would most likely be boring by buying, not boring, (laughs) buying a more traditional uh, Christmas tree skirt that's looking for something that really can be that family heirloom that, you know, they're, Mm -hmm. they're purchasing it. They look forward to the day when they can hand it down to their daughter or daughter-in-law and, and all of the memories that take place around that Christmas tree skirt. And so the high quality, long lasting aspect of that is going to speak more to the family heirloom. And so those are, it's the same feature, right? It's the same thing. It's high quality, but how you interpret that and how you present that and how you communicate around that is going to be so different based on the type of brand that you are and the type of customer you're communicating with and how you can really create a conversation around that. That's going to um, allow for both sides to feel really seen and understood and excited. Yes, this is this has just been so great. This is such a fun conversation talking all about this marketing and branding. And you guys, your number one takeaway today really needs to be creating that customer avatar for each of your products. And we know that on Amazon, we all can be kind of jack of all trades. We all don't just have some sort of makeup line and that's all we have. You know, there's I sell so many different products. And so it's a little overwhelming to think I have to create an avatar for all of these. However, if you're following wholesale bundle system, you already know that that this is part of the process. And so go back and do your homework and think about when I, when we're talking customer avatar here, and that's like the official name here, but when we're talking inside the system, it's who, what, when, where, why, and how. It every single product you bring to the table, it doesn't take very long. We just did it in just a few minutes because we're gonna put ourselves in the shoes of our customer and then we're gonna speak our language. And that's gonna be different for each product that you bring to the table. But I, I, I want to I want to say I promise, but I can't promise that, I guess. What I'm saying is it will make a difference. It really will make a difference. As a customer, we feel it when our the brands are investing more into what we want and need. When we feel understood and we feel someone relates to us and we're like, oh, this person understands what it's like to be a mom or what it's like to be a girl with curly hair. I mean, the struggle is real. And so when I feel like a company is aligning with me, they know the struggle is real and they're here to help me. I feel that and I want to spend more with that company. I want to come back. And your customers are going to feel the same way when you're investing your time into speaking their language, meeting their needs, and and creating a brand that that just gets them. They're like, oh, this person, this company understands me. They know what I want. They know that I'm just going to use this Christmas tree skirt one time, but it dang well better be the best one. Awesome. Well, Emma, thank you so much for coming and spending this hour with us. I don't take that for granted. I I appreciate your time and energy. Please let everyone else know how they can get in touch with you and get more into the mind of your expertise and all of this fun, crazy stuff we talked about. Yeah. So our website is marketingbyemma.com. We're also on Facebook, on um, LinkedIn, sort of whatever your primary method of conversation. If if you want to go to our website and you'll be able to find all, all of the ways to communicate with us, we'd also, we, we offer a free listing analysis. So if this is totally over your head and you're feeling like I can understand the value of this, but I don't actually know exactly you know, if my listing is good enough or if there are things that I could be doing better, we're happy to take a look at it and provide you with some feedback of our observations. And then of course, if you would like us to help implement those things, then we can help with the listing creation or revamp as well. So the free listing analysis is marketingbyemma.com slash free analysis, or it's in a a banner at the top. So whatever page you're on, you can find it. Uh, But really, I mean, the the listing is one of those places where if you can hone it in and get it right, what would happen to your business and your life if you were able to even just convert a few more percentages than what you're already doing? That would that could have a, a, a huge impact on your business. So it really is worth digging in and and 
taking the time to optimize these aspects of your business because they can have really uh, in- incredible impacts. Y'all, listen, I am I am encouraging you to take Emma up on this offer and with your, your best selling product. So you think your best selling products be like, oh, that one's fine. It's doing well. No, it can do better. I promise it can do better. It can. So take your best listing and go to marketingbyemma.com forward slash free analysis and give her your best selling ASIN because even if they can improve it by 3%, 3% more orders, 3% more profit in your pocket over the course of however long this listing sells. Like we know they come and go and things like that. So um, take your best one and just one up it a little bit more. And you know, even this, the holidays are coming. Now is the best time to be able to do that. I fully trust Emma and I know that she is gonna take really good care of you. So uh, marketing by <laughs> marketingbyemma.com forward slash free analysis. I know I'm gonna get mine because I have one listing that I know needs a little bit of love. Um, it's doing okay, but I know it could do better so we are all in this together and you guys know i know you would you could be any other place doing any other thing you're listening to the amazon files podcast i don't take that for granted thank you guys so much for being here we'll see you same time same place next week on the amazon files